All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the wonderful world of workspaces. Sounds kind of magical, right? It's kind of like a, a Disney ride, but there's, uh, you know, not an actual roller coaster here. But like everything with Drupal, there's going to be some ups and downs. Hopefully, it, uh, you know, it'll be emotional ups and downs, not physical up and down, ups and downs. So uh, let's see what we can uh, make out of workspaces and uh, you know, keep things moving and keep things uh, like screaming to a minimum. Uh, I'm Scott. Um, I'm Senior Director of Drupal Delivery at uh, Bounty S Times Acolyte. I've been doing Drupal for a little too long now. Um, I've done a lot of time uh, helping wrangle chaotic came, uh, content before workspaces come along. So uh, now that we finally have workspaces, uh, hopefully we can bring some order to the chaos. And uh, today, I'm going to show you how to use workspaces, and uh, hopefully it can be your, you know, your Marie Kondo of content. Uh, but there won't be any folding tutorials, I promise. But at the end, hopefully workspaces will spark uh, some joy for you. So here's the plan. First, we're going to chat about what workspaces actually is. And then uh, I might dazzle you with uh, a little bit of a demo uh, with how to leverage workspaces. Uh, you may have noticed I have some technical challenges, so hopefully we'll work through those. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how you can use workspaces for your content workflow. And uh, of course, there are limitations. Uh, spoiler alert, sorry. Um, but let's be honest, uh, you know, if we're following Marie Kondo, you can't clean everything all at once, so we've got to work through it. And uh, you know we'll just ignore the little bits and bobs that are uh, under uh, the, the the rug. So uh, we'll finish up with some some Q and A. Uh, I added a C here, so it could could be whatever you want. It could be complaints, concerns, comments, whatever you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So workspaces. Man, what a name! It sounds like uh, you know a productivity app for people who. I don't know, microwave their leftover fish in the communal kitchen and make the whole office smell. <laughs> but in Drupal 11, it's a lot cooler. Uh, in Drupal 11, the workspaces module has graduated from uh, experimental to fully supported module. And that's really a, a fancy way of saying uh, we think it works now, mostly. Uh, so uh, you, you get to create and edit content in this magical workspace bubble, uh, a contained space with uh, where things go on, but nothing actually happens on the live site. And then when you're ready, um, you can publish all of your changes all at once to the live site, and like it's like boom. It's kind of like a, a fireworks display, but there are no scared pets. So that's really cool. Uh, so let's talk about some of the, the features of workspaces. Uh, first of all, you can create multiple workspaces. Uh, so a workspace is, again, that magical bubble where you can edit and create new content. Uh, and you can create multiple workspaces, so you know why, why stop at one? You can compartmentalize everything. Uh, you know, one for that, that new section of the website, uh, one for uh, edits to blog posts, and maybe another one uh, to contain maybe your existential crisis about what taxonomy terms to pick uh, for new content. So the world here is, is really your proverbial oyster. Um, <clears throat> and you can create some workspaces. They're like tiny little baby workspaces. So you can work on specific parts of a broader project without disturbing the rest. So it's kind of like having you know boxes inside of boxes. Uh, it feels a little excessive until you realize how much you can actually do with it. And hopefully we'll be able to show you that today. Now, these workspaces can handle new content, edits to existing content, and again, those tricky little taxonomy terms and, and also custom menu links. Uh, it's like um, you know organizing your shoes, your sweaters, and that pile of things you don't even remember buying. Uh, you know, getting everything organized, everything has a special place, um, and it also works with layout builder because you know nothing says I've got it all together like putting blocks into conceptual blocks on a page that's not published, and then keep those blocks in a workspace box until you know you're all ready to put those boxes out onto the, the actual website for everyone to see. So that's really cool. Um, so let's talk about some use cases. So when should you be uh, using workspaces? Um, you know, I think primarily whenever you have larger sets of content edits to make, 
uh, it makes sense to, to put those into a workspace. Um, and uh, if you are uh, working maybe on like sections of a site that aren't ready uh, to go live quite yet, but you want to start building that content. So think of maybe uh, you know hypothetical scenario of uh, a product launch. So you're going to have a product detail page or maybe have some additional supplemental pages about that. So you might want to put those all together in one workspace. And then when that pro product actually goes live, you know, not on the intended date that everyone said we were, we're going to launch it on September 12th, uh, but, you know, actually October 14th when everything is finally ready to go live. Uh, all those content edits are there, ready to go. You just press a button and uh, it, everything, is, uh, everything is live. Um, so much better than uh, older modes of managing content in Drupal where you had to build these pages individually and if you accidentally hit publish then it's live but everything else isn't so you might have some broken links. You know it's kind of like, you know, it used to be kind of like hosting a dinner party at your house when you're in the middle of a kitchen remodel. Yes you can do it but you know why would you? Uh, so Workspaces kind of brings order to that chaos. Uh, other use cases, um, you know, maybe you have a longer lead time uh, for content going live, but you want to start getting getting ahead of the game. Uh, so again, it's like that big project that you've been working on for six months and it needs another month. It's cool. It's not interrupting uh, other content flows on the website. So Workspace uh, lets you, lets you kind of keeps everything there until it's really all done. Um, so that's great. And uh, you know you can also use it for reviewing content, uh, you know, as a, a group of content as a whole, um, with permissions uh, in Drupal and, and the right roles. You can actually get groups of people to review content as it would appear on the live site. Uh, because there's really nothing that sparks joy for me like getting, you know, six people to agree on what content should be on a website before it goes live. That's never a problem, right? <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, let's talk about how uh, to really leverage uh, workspaces here. Um, as mentioned before, you can uh, you know use a single workspace for all of your group content updates. Um, you know, think of it as like um, throwing the big pile of laundry you have here into one laundry basket. It's really cool. Uh, you know, it's a bold strategy. Hopefully, uh, you don't have a red sock in there and. Uh, you know, your, your white t-shirts turn pink. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, so mostly it works. Um, or if you uh, prefer a bit more control, or like me, you like making things complicated, uh, you can create multiple workspaces. So you can have as many workspaces as you want. You can get, get wild, but not too wild. Um, it's like having separate laundry baskets, one for the lights, one for the darks, and then one for that one red sock that you don't know what to do with. Uh, so organization for, for the win here. Um, and if you have a really massive project, no problem. You can uh, create child, uh, something called child workspaces. So a workspaces can have, uh, a workspace can have sub workspaces. Uh, and uh, the, the paradigm, the terminology that Drupal uses is uh, parent. Uh, so parent and child workspaces. So, um, so here, if you have a really large project, you can uh, assign those child workspaces uh, to subsets of content to various people and, and then kind of merge them up uh, into that parent workspace and when everything is ready to go live you can push it live so if you have uh, you know someone in x department needs to do some pages and someone in y department needs to do some other pages uh, you can kind of separate those concerns and separate those assignments so everyone's working in their their own little sandbox And then uh, if you are truly adventurous, uh, you can uh, combine workspaces with workflows. Uh, and this, this is where things get fun, um, maybe stressful, uh, probably a little bit of both. Uh, but you, workspaces and workflows are really two independent things that like to do their own thing. Uh, so workflows allow you to put content through various stages of uh, progression before it's actually published. So you could have a piece of content that's in a draft mode. Uh, once, once you are happy with it, you can send it to you know, potentially like a review of a, a marketing, and then finally to maybe a compliance review by the legal department, and then actually for reals finally, 
uh, send it uh, to the website by actually publishing it. Uh, and, and then Workspaces allows you to contain those various pieces of content, which may be in a workflow, into their own little box. Uh, so it's like, it's like trying to run two separate trains down the same track at the same time. It's doable, but you kind of have to merge those trains together uh, to, to get it down uh, that one section of track. I don't have a demo for this specifically, uh, but when we're talking about some limitations to uh, uh, workspaces, uh, I'll go into to some things to keep in mind uh, there a little more. All right, so this is the danger time. It is time for a live demo. I've, I've done uh, several talks at camps and cons, and uh, uh, hopefully it won't be a train wreck. Uh, so let's see if we can do this. Uh, you know, will I survive? Will I break something? Uh, you know, stay tuned. We'll, we'll, we'll find out together. Uh, so hopefully it'll be suspenseful, uh, you know, more, more suspenseful like, you know, trying to catch a water balloon flying at my face than, you know, walking a tightrope. So hopefully it uh, won't be so risky. Okay, so you're going to have to forgive the, uh, uh, some of the fun stuff here. Let me get around this. And then I've got to go here. And what do I have to do? Uh, I have to go here. Okay. I think if I do this. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So what I have here is a uh, pretty vanilla uh, installation of Drupal standard profile. Um, and I've enabled um, workspaces and uh, I created a content type for something called an insight article. Uh, and then I also have path auto turned on. Uh, pretty much everything else is just out of the box standard profile here. Um, so first thing is uh, you'll see is in the admin toolbar here, we have this nice little green box that says live. So this is the, this is the workspaces indicator. This tells you what workspace you are currently in. And so we have, we have this live workspace. Now, uh, when you turn on the workspaces module, you get two workspaces. You get live, which is cleverly uh, the live site. Uh, and then you get another one called stage. Uh, and this is where you uh, stage your content uh, before it goes live. But you, again, you can create as many workspaces as you want. So to switch to work, to different workspaces, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is you can go to the configuration menu, go down to workflow, uh, and then workspaces. Uh, and if it, if it feels a little wonky that you're going configuration, workflow, workspaces, uh, you should see it when you have workspaces and uh, workflows enabled because you go to configuration, workflow, workspaces, but then right above it is another one called workflows. Uh, so we go to workspaces. Uh, here are uh, the workspaces that I have uh, created. We have live, which is this lovely beige color, meaning that it's active. And then I created a hypothetical new section uh, as a workspace, and then we have our stage. So I can switch to one of these by uh, finding the right drop down button. Uh, in this list and pressing switch to stage, for example, and then I'm in the staging site or staging workspace. Uh, we can see that we have stage here in the upper right. I can also click on stage and switch to a different workspace. So if I wanted to switch over to my hypothetical new section, uh, just click on that and I'll get a little confirmation box and then I'm switched over. And really what, what, what's happening here is I am viewing the site uh, as if everything in that workspace is published. So I have this uh, really fancy blog post with a lot of buzzwords in it that may or may not have been generated by uh, ChatGPT uh, that uh, is in this workspace that's not yet published, so revolutionizing the digital ecosystem with disruptive synergies and blockchain, blockchain integration. If I were to switch over to live, uh, just to show you really quick, uh, that blog post is gone, and now we're talking about hypothetical corpse uh, strategic innovation solutions. So that's fancy. Okay, so switching back over to my hypothetical new uh, section, I can come in here, I can uh, create new content if I wanted to. So uh, I'm going to um, put the microphone down. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Okay, so we're going to create a, uh, a new fancy uh, article here, if I can start. Wow. Don't try to type on your tippy toes while you're looking down. It doesn't work too well. <laughs> okay. 
So here we've got uh, this new new article. I'm just going to publish it or hit save. So now I have this new fancy article. Uh, and uh, if I go to my homepage, I can see it's at the top of the list because uh, you know promote to the top of the list uh, or, or promote to the homepage uh, was uh, selected on this particular node. And then if, again, if I switch over to live, uh, for example, uh, it's not there. So how do you know what pieces of content? Okay, I'm switching back to this so I can make sure you're hearing me. Um, how do you know what pieces of content are within that workspace? Uh, that's a great question, Cherry. Thank you for asking. Um, so we're going to switch over to our hypothetical workspace here and then uh, go to uh, configuration workflow workspaces. And uh, if I click on the link uh, that is provided for that workspace name, it shows me all of the content, all of the taxonomy terms, the menu items that are part of that workspace. So I can go in here and make whatever edits. Uh, I can see very easily what's in there. Uh, this is great for if you need to send a workspace to someone for review. Uh, very easy for them to, to see that. Uh, and uh, yeah, when I'm ready for this to go live, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to delete my fancy new article because I don't want that uh, in there. Yay! <laughs> live demos for the win, right? All right, let's hope, we, let's hope we didn't uh, crash the whole site. Okay, let's just go with it. Okay, so we're going to publish this because what could possibly go wrong now? <laughs> okay, so when you go to publish a, a workspace, it's going to tell you how many pieces of content are going to go live and make sure you really, really want to do it. And here, hopefully it works. Yes, it did. Okay, so now if I click on uh, the link for that hypothetical new section, the, sec the, the workspace stays but the content has been pushed over to live now. So that, that content's live. So this, this workspace is now empty. So uh, I am in that, that workspace. So if I were to create new content, they get it. Those go right back into this laundry basket. Uh, if I wanted to see everything on the live site, uh, I can click here and then go to live, switch over to that. And it's showing me, because I was in that config form, uh, there, there's nothing pending in the live workspace because why would there be anything in there? Because it goes live immediately. So now I'm on the live site or in the live workspace, and we can see my fancy uh, new article and the uh, the buzzwordy uh, one is also uh, published now. So uh, a few gotchas, and I'm going to mention these uh, when I get to the next section in the presentation. Uh, I'm in the staging site now, uh, just for example, and um, let's say I wanted to I don't know let's enable a module because what could go wrong with enabling a module? Um, on a live demo. So I'm going to turn on the media library because, you know, why not? But it's not going to let me uh, because config changes can only happen in the live workspace. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because if you're making config changes on your site, you want to be able to export those, get them into code, and then get that through your, your, your process to go from dev to stage to production. So it kind of makes sense. Um, the, the thing that is kind of a downer for me on this is you only find out that you can't submit that form after you've submitted the form. So it'd be really a really cool feature to like give you a warning ahead of time or to disable the submit button on a form like that just to kind of give you that indicator that, hey, you can't do this here. Instead of, you know, what if this were like a view you were creating and you get to the end and hit save and then it doesn't work. All that time, right? Yeah, and we got a question here. Um, would you relist, like you had a list of what things are, can be contained in a workspace. Mm -hmm. Nodes, taxonomies, what else? Okay, so nodes, so you can uh, create new nodes, edit existing nodes, taxonomy terms. You can add new taxonomy terms, edit existing taxonomy terms, uh, custom menu links. So these aren't the ones generated by your module, these are ones like you're creating a new page and you want to drop it into your navigation menu those can get added to the workspace. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the trick there is, you, you heard me say new and edit. You cannot delete content out of a workspace. So that's going to be a little strange if, as part of whatever it is you're, you know, in that workspace that you're pushing live, you need to unpublish some things. 
uh, well, I just kind of gave it away there. You know, instead of deleting, you can set things to unpublish in that workspace, and then when it goes live, that when that workspace gets promoted to to the live workspace, then that node goes from published to unpublished. Then at that point, you can delete it. All right. Um, before I yeah, we got a question over here. So the question was around um, what happens with URL aliases. Uh, if there's like a conflict between maybe a new page that you're creating a new version of the page versus the existing version, um, you're going you're gonna to have a sad moment. Uh, you, it's not going to let you create a path alias that matches another one. Uh, so you know, a few things that you could do there. One would be, um, there you go. One would be to, to edit the node that has that path alias that you want to use. If it's the same content type, you know, that'd be a great way of, of handling it. Uh, but if it, you're creating a different, uh, a node of a different content type than your existing one, you could probably use something like a URL redirect. Um, you know, once it goes live, you're gonna have a little switcheroo, you know, panic moment behind the scenes, just to make sure everything's wired up right. But that, that'd probably be the cleanest way to handle that scenario. Yep, yep, okay. All right. Um, and as you were asking that question, another thought came to mind that it is now gone. So that's great. Um, does media get included? Uh, I mention it, but like if it does nodes and taxonomy, does it do media? I, I, I think that media references it can. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I, I would have to check, Sherry, on if, if like you could create a new, you know, media entity. Uh, the media reference, yes, but I'm not sure about the entity itself. So that's a good question. And I'm not going to do that live. No, you don't. Uh, just to test <laughs> Okay. Um, let's enable some more modules. Yeah, let's just enable some more modules. Why not? <laughs> okay, so here we are. Um, I think I'm going to switch back over to presentation mode here. Um, okay, so some of this we kind of covered already. Um, yeah, so these are some of the, the limitations here. Uh, important stuff to remember, you know, uh, first you can only do site building and config changes in the live workspace. Uh, but in theory, again, workspaces are, are used in uh, production, so it's fine. It's like saying, you know, uh, you can only remodel the house when you're actually living it. So that's that's cool. Um, okay, this this is the point I was gonna gonna make. Okay, this is cool. Uh, I actually had a note about it. Uh, you can't edit the same piece of content in different workspaces simultaneously. Um, you know, it's it's just would create some conflicts. Uh, so you, it wouldn't know which one you know, is the primary, which one should supplant the other. So uh, focus on one workspace at a time with that content and things will, will stay under control. Uh, deleting a workspace. Um, so you can create work, as many workspaces as you need. Uh, when you delete a workspace, if there are any pending content edits or new nodes or whatever in that workspace, when you delete it, those just poof, just gone. Uh, so they're erased from existence. Uh, it's like that, you know, it's like the dryer ate the sock at that moment. Um, so, you know, just, so just keep in mind, uh, you know, that when you delete a workspace, anything that's in that workspace gets deleted. Um, again, you get two workspaces by, by default, you know, um, you can create as many as you want, but, you know, keep it, keep it reasonable. Um, in the live, the live workspace is the live site, so it's a, a little bit of a special animal. You can't delete the live one, because uh, that, that would be very bad if you deleted your live workspace. Um, okay, so with menu items, yes, you can create and modify new menu items, but once you do that, uh, the menu kind of gets locked down. You can't 
reorder anything in that menu. You can't change the hierarchy of items in that menu, like uh, what level it is. Uh, so it's frustrating, but you know, right now, then, then it's kind of the rules. So you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, uh, the workspace indicator that, that I showed you, it is, it is really, really helpful. A quick visual reminder of where you are gives you a link to easily switch to a different workspace. There's even a button in there to publish that workspace. Um, but that workspace indicator doesn't work in all of the admin tools just yet. So like the, the experimental module for navigation, uh, that new navigation paradigm, it's, it doesn't work in there, so you're probably gonna feel a little lost if you're using that. You'll just have to remember to go configuration, workflow, workspaces uh, to, to do any kind of workspace management there. Um, yeah, so you'll figure it out, but you'll be a little confused every once in a while. Um, but if you're looking for something visually a little fresher than the Olivera theme, um, Gen, the Gen theme uh, does actually work with this, so uh, you, can, you can use that if you like. Um, the workspaces are entities within Drupal, but they're not config entities, they're just kind of their own little entity. Uh, and they are fieldable, so you can, you can decorate them with additional fields uh, that help you organize and manage the workspaces as you, as you see fit. Um, but that's kind of countered against uh, workspaces themselves. Um, so the, the fields are exportable in config, so you do that in your local, if you say you wanted to add a new, new fancy custom uh, workspace field, do that on your local, export it, push it through the process. Uh, but the workspace entities themselves are not exportable, so they live where they are. Uh, they're a little, little nomadic in that way. They, just, they, they are where they are. Um, yeah, oh, actually I just said that. Workspaces are not config exportable. There we go. All right, so let's talk about some of the limitations. Uh, child workspaces uh, merge up into parent workspaces. Uh, as of this morning, uh, it leaves a bit of a mess, um, but there's a patch for that. So, you know, just put some Drupal duct tape on it, everything's fine. <laughs> so, what happens is the, uh, when you merge a child workspace into parent workspace without, without the duct tape, uh, that content does get into that parent workspace, it does get into live, but if you were to click into the child workspace, that content is still there, but you click on a link of it, and it's, it just it just kind of panics a bit, so uh, there is a patch for that. Um, yep, workspaces and workflows don't get along too well. Actually, uh, so Drupal 11.0.4 came out, I think it was today. Uh, I noticed I had an update um, when I was uh, running through uh, everything this morning. Uh, it looks like they play a little nicer together now. Um, previously, if you uh, had a workflow and workspaces together, if there was content in the workspace that was under a workflow, uh, then it would uh, kind of fail when you try to publish it. Um, and it, particularly if, um, it was a con, uh, in, the, in the case I, I came across, if I had multiple taxonomy vocabularies and one of them was not under the workflow uh, process and you edited something in that vocabulary in that workspace and you had something else, uh, another taxonomy that was in workflow in that workspace, it just totally panicked, it just paired out. Uh, but it looks like as of this morning, that's been resolved. Uh, but again, um, two trains going down the same track. Um, very much not like my train of thought right now, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, when you have uh, content in a workflow, it has to get all the way to the end, to published, before you can merge that workspace into the live workspace. So if you have something that's still in draft or under review, but it's not yet published, um, and you go to merge that workspace or publish that workspace into live, it will tell you that there is content under a moderation workflow and it has to be published before anything in that workspace can be published. So again, two trains, same track. Yep. Once you set up a workspace, can you detach something from it? Like if you go live with everything, except this one piece, we're changing our mind on that. Can you pull it back out? You, uh, so the question was, can you 
pull out a piece of content out of a workspace because, let's say, compliance said, oh, we don't like the wording here, but everything else is fine to go. Um, you can delete it out of the workspace. You can delete that revision out of the workspace, okay. and then you have to add it to another one. There's not a, a magic like transporter beam that can put it into a different one. There is a way to say like, okay, we're giving up on that that yeah. chunk. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Any questions? Sir, my question here too. Mine was the converse of that. Can you cherry pick and say, okay, these three things are cool to go. Go ahead and push them, but leave everything nope. else. No. Nope. The workspace is it as of today. It is relatively monolithic that everything in the workspace goes. Um, I think it, I think it would be relatively easy to move things uh, because behind the scenes, what happens is when you uh, create a new piece of content or edit content um, in a workspace, there's just a field in the in that node table that tells you what workspace it's in. So it would be really easy, and you know we don't hack things in Drupal, of course. But what you could, you know, if you were to be like a hacker, uh, you could go directly into the database and then just change the name. Uh, yeah, that that's in that the value that's in that field from the current workspace to the one you want to move it to, and it should be okay. Is that kind of like WD forty, WD forty? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, it totally is. Uh, yep, totally like WD forty there. Okay. All right. Uh, the other limitation I have and permissions are really wonky with workspaces. Um, yeah, they're they're like those those house rules that, that everyone knows but no one follows. Uh, we'll, you know, basically, they're working on it. We'll get there eventually, but for now, it's kind of a, a free-for-all. So right now, the ability of users uh, to, to have their role, to, let me try that again. Uh, a role, so a user within a role, um, has to have either uh, administer workspaces or view any workspace in order to see the workspaces. Even though there's a permission here that says view own workspace or edit own workspace, but right now they have to have the any uh, permission to be able to, to use like the workspaces switcher. Um, every time I've tried to uh, uh, get it to work with various permissions for like, in this case I have an editor role set up, uh, just get a very, um, very meaningful error. Oops, something went wrong. Check your developer, your browser console. Uh, so uh, I don't know what, what the, the underpinnings are of what actually is happening that is causing that error, but right now it just doesn't work. All right, uh, I think that's it for what I have. So we've reached the end. Time for questions, answers, comments, complaints, concerns. So let's let's talk about the chaos. Uh, I think your hand up was up, up uh, first over here. All right, I, I got two points about the quick. Um, one, if I'm stuck on Drupal 10 for a while, you said it is an experimental. Would I be able to enable that experimental and hopefully be able to play with some of this? Yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, 10.3. Okay. Um, it, I don't know if it's flagged as experimental in all of Drupal 10, but at 10.3 and later, you should be able to use workspaces uh, with relative confidence. And then, are there any add-ons or tools to see sort of side by side? This is what it looks like. This is what your uh, revision looks like. You know. Yeah, I think. Well, you could you could rely on like the diff module to, for a node um, to see side by side what those are, because really all Workspaces is doing is it's you're creating new revisions like you would through normal edits to a node. It's just flagging that revision with a workspace name in that that secret magic field in the database. That's what's keeping it separated into that workspace. So in theory, the diff module will still work for that. Uh, but there's not a side-by-side -side tool for like the site level to be able to do that. Uh, your best bet there is just to spin up another browser window like an incognito and see the live site there, and then use you know be logged in and use workspaces there. Now there is a um, uh, workspace extras module that. It's not covered under security policy yet. I don't know if it's even like a 1.0 version of it yet, but it has some cool tools. It has a lot of potential in there. Uh, some things that I, I really liked uh, when I was checking it out, one is like scheduled uh, publishing of workspace. So think of it as the scheduled publication of a node, but on a workspace level, that'd be really cool because you know why not uh, 
you know, be asleep while your, your site is pushing out the workspace, right? <laughs> uh, and then there are some other tools uh, in there just to kind of help, you know, some of the quality of life for developers uh, as well. Okay, I had some other questions here. Um, when you're editing something, like, do you have to, when you, you know, you have a note that's part of the workspace, uh, do you now just edit it from the workspace, or can you edit it also as a note? Good question. So the question is, if I have workspaces enabled, do I have to edit it within that within a workspace? The answer is no. Uh, if you have just like a one-off change to a page and you're just going to push it live immediately, you can just do it directly in that live workspace. It's totally fine. Yes. So adding on to that question, uh, if I have a node and then I give that node to the workspace or assign it to the workspace. Can I then edit it regularly, or must I publish my edits through the workspace? Yes. The case in here mm -hmm. is that we've got people wanting to publish a whole workspace of content updates, but it's taken so freaking long, <laughs> and they just need to get that one change about that one piece of content out now. Mm -hmm. How can I support that? Every time. Yep. Uh, that's that's a very good question. Uh, so once a node is edited and in a workspace, that's where any future edits for that node will live. Um, so the, the short answer is no. It can't edit something in the live site that is also within a workspace as of today. Okay. Yep. So one of the common uh, things that we run across is editorial access. Yeah, yeah. As of right now, there's no way to uh, just, you know, off the shelf workspaces to lock that down to say this workspace can only have events or that workspace can only have blog posts. Um, so you have to kind of trust your content editors to, to put things in the right spot. I think it'd be really easy to add that as a, uh, you know, like a supplemental module to, to workspaces, it's just leveraging the APIs and, you know, even the, the fieldable uh, entity of workspaces itself, that's where you could define this workspace can only have this content type and then a little bit of glue and duct tape uh, within a custom module could probably get you there. Yep. Sorry. Is there anything you have to do in module code to make it aware of workplace state? Um, so, yeah. so like the, the, I guess the use case would be like if I have a current site that doesn't know which space it's on, mm -hmm. I want to enable it, but I have a bunch of code that is checking for is published. Mm -hmm. When I'm in my other workspace, is is published still going to work on something that is nominally not yet published? Yeah, it would. It would likely pick up the published state, uh, even though it's within a workspace. So you would probably need. Um, some additional code to check for the workspace um, state, like you said, to see what workspace it's in. If something is published and in a workspace, then in theory it is not yet published on the, in the live workspace. Is that is that tracking? That yeah. So okay. so I have to change my my calls. It's published to be is published or yeah. or in a current workspace or yeah. current workspace matches. Yeah, it's, it's no, it's okay. yeah, there are there are some APIs that can get that information for you, so you'll just probably have to add that check into your custom code. And so similarly, like if I'm in a custom workspace and like uh, there are views which have filters for is published, it's not going to show up in those views yet, even though I'm. Yeah, you know, okay. yeah, yeah. It will it will respect that because uh, as we saw in the the fantastic demo, the dazzling demo that you saw. Um, that that homepage view is just the standard view, so it was it was respecting workspace uh, in presenting what was uh, when we were in the live workspace. It only presented things that were in the live workspace. Okay. Yep. All right. Another question. Back here. Changing configuration doesn't work. Is that also true for configuring one? Um, I haven't checked that out. Um, I would assume that any config changes uh, that you try to make are just going to be blocked when you hit submit. 
So if you have something like webform ignore or a config ignore, I think those really only come into play when you do a config import, so I don't think you'll run into any issues. Sounds like content changes only, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, yeah. And I, I haven't. I mean, uh, yeah. There are some things like you know, can you add a user with, in the, you know, when you're not in the live workspace? No, but I mean, I don't know that it would hurt. But that should you try. be a rule. Like, yeah. it makes like workspace. It sounds like something just uh, that's a part it's of it's workflow. Yep. Yeah. And. Like configuration changes sounds, it would bring a lot of things as well as, yeah, it would just it would bring a lot of things if you allow configuration changes in a workspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, any other questions? Yes? <laughs> you know, we could try it. We've got like, what, we got three minutes. What could possibly go wrong? And my battery is about to die, so you know what really could go wrong here. Okay. All right. I, mean, I don't want you to break your hypothetical website here. I know. I can't. Oh, I'm over here. Okay. So extend. Okay. So am I in my workspace now? Like, okay. Yeah. We're gonna turn all on. There we go. Two models of the I know. We just. We're learning here. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the stage here. Um, let's see here. Content, media, add media. And the launch. It's like, do I have an image? Okay. Brian, do I have an image? All right. Yeah. Ooh, from desktop. I'm just going to. Add this random placeholder image. Okay, so we got that. We're gonna go here. Image workspace. Yeah, the media is part of the, the workspace. So yes. Well, let's see if we can add a user. Don't look at my password. It's totally not ABC. <laughs> yep. Uh, form can only be submitted in the default workspace. So there we go. I had a look at that uh, workspaces extra module, and it has a sub module called uh, workspace extra config. So okay. It doesn't look like it has a dependency on bad judgment, but. <laughs> Okay, so Martin said that uh, there, the Workspace Extras module does have uh, Workspace Config, which allows you to do config changes in a workspace. I uh, don't know if that if <laughs> config changes are just stage or not. Idea, yeah, uh, <laughs> might need some bad judgment uh, for that one. Yeah. All right, that's all I've got. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day.